UK Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. It's basically a hit in the performance when you talk about performance in the real time. So you have to understand, okay, what kind of uh, what uh, what kind of program is this, and is my program going to loop through all the arrays and going to find some some values here? So you have to decide what to use. Okay, now here as I've used a for loop, this this is not at all a good match here. So what am I going to do is instead of for loop. Uh, Okay, I'll, I'll just use a switch case. All right. So what am I going to do here is, uh, I'll just pass on the value here. Let's say this is the value of uh, J. Okay. And the value here will be your one. Oh, let's say, okay, this is one. And let me have one more case here. And two column enter break okay we'll talk about this one by one so same way i'll just three four five okay so let me change the value here as three four five okay and what i'm going to do is i'm going to do the same thing here i'm going to copy this and paste it here enter paste enter paste enter paste and enter paste okay so this is your 5 this is your 4 this is your 3 2 1 okay so what is the shortcut for getting a switch statement just uh, type sw and say control space so you basically have this in picture and just do an enter you will find out okay so the same thing which i did here but i'll be instead of using a if and else condition okay now here at last else um i just want to say uh let's say here some default value default integer let's say integer okay now why did i add a else condition at the end because let's say uh, here only you're checking for one two three four five okay but in the array you have got one more extra element that is your six so it will loop uh, through each and every value and uh, for for the one it prints this one for two it prints this three prints this four five and at last when it comes to your six it doesn't find anything in the condition here in the if, if and else condition anything here so at last it goes to your else block okay so let me comment this out the same thing here uh, I found one here I found two three four five at last if I could not find anything I'll just come to the default block and I'll just print something here as default integer okay so ultimately here both the when I just want to see the output okay let me just comment this output wise if I just run this run as uh, Java application output wise I have no difference at all okay so if I even though if I re, uh, execute the other one uh, let me comment this out and uncomment this one okay so if I even run this, run as Java application, I'll get the same output here also. Okay, instead of you have this one here, two here, and three, four, five. 
All right. So output wise, I do not see any difference. Both are same. But when it comes to performance, that's what we are interested in here. Now, what happens in your switch statement is, it's not like your if and else condition. In your switch statement, the moment, uh, okay, the moment you loop through your, let's say this is i equals to, uh, sorry j equals to one, right? So this is one here. So when it when you are saying switch, switch one. So the moment you say switch one, it directly jumps to your case number one here. Okay, we'll talk about the break later. So the moment let's say you say four, it doesn't even check about case one, two, three. It directly jumps to your case number four. Now for e, let's say if uh, this this takes one second of time, right? One second for me. So always it is so consistent that you, whatever the number you put, even though you put thousand, let's say you have case one to thousand, you just put your thousand, it will only take one second to print the value as I am thousand. Okay. So in that case, basically you uh, enhance your performance uh, whenever you try to use a loop and depending on what kind of loop you're using and which is suitable for you, you have to understand, okay, whether your if and else is suitable for you or a switch statement is suitable for you, okay. So in practical, uh, whenever you know that your array size is, is constant and you will be getting some dynamic value, let's say four sometimes, five sometimes, six sometimes, then use a switch statement, okay. And uh, whenever you want to use a for loop, you want to loop through the entire uh, entire uh, array. So use a for loop, and depending on that, you can have some conditions. Okay. So this is the this is the difference between your uh, using a for loop and and your switch statement basically. Okay. So switch statement, you basically enhanced your performance here. Okay. Now coming on to the other things. I say switch. If I do not say break, what happens? I do not give a break here. I do not give a break here. I do not give a. Okay, I'll give a break here. Okay. Now, the moment I let me just give you a simple example here, instead of having this inside a condition. So let me go out of this and switch. And let me just comment the entire thing here for now. From here to here. So I comment commented out the entire thing here. Okay. Uh, so let me just define a value. Let's say int uh, switch index. Okay. So switch index equals to uh, two. Okay. So I'm going to take the switch index and push it here. Right. So I'm basically going to say that uh, if my value is two, I'm going to print. Uh, I'm I'm two when I'm okay. Let me just uncomment this one for now and see this. Okay. So I just took out the switch statement from the uh, for loop to make it more clear and to understand this. So here I'm just giving the value as two. Right click, uh, run as Java application. I get the value as two here. All right. Now as I said. When it finds a value two here, it jumps directly to that particular statement or to that particular case here. Okay. Now the question is, what is this break statement? Uh, I do not give a break here. Right click, run as Java application. I have no problems because when you say two here, it directly jumps to your two here. Right? It doesn't even care about these things. Okay. Let me uncomment this. And let me not give a break here. Now I'm not giving a break in which case I'm not giving a break for the case two. Okay. And here I'm interested in my switch of case two. So what happens? Let's see, right click run as uh, Java application. Now what's happening is it came, it comes to your case two, right? It prints this. And as I have not, I'm not breaking the, uh, breaking the uh, loop here, right? I'm not breaking anything here. It basically goes to the second, third case. It prints here, right? That is IM3. And at last it is breaking here. Now what if I do not break, if I, if I do not put a breakpoint here, right click, run as Java application. The same thing, it prints two, three, four. 
and the same thing goes on and on and on. So what happens? When you use a break, you are only interested in the statement above that and you are basically breaking the entire condition here. Okay, you are going out, I mean you are going out of the condition of your switch and you are just printing what you needed. Alright, and at last let's say here I am giving some value as uh, 6 and I know that this particular 6 is no way uh, present in my any of the cases. So what happens? It basically goes to your default. So right click, run as Java application, it basically goes to your default integer. Right? It doesn't even uh, check for any of the cases because it could not find any match to any of the cases. Okay? Uh, any questions here? Uh, I just wait for a few seconds. If no questions, then I'll move on. Okay. All right. So let's let's move on to the another jump statement. Okay. We have got something like your break. Break. We have already seen that. Uh, Okay, the question is, uh, yeah, you can you you can put as many condition as many cases we can, and there is no restrictions here. Uh, does switch case always improve performance? Yes, it improve performance for sure. Okay, so as I said, if you have thousand conditions to check, and you know that you have got only one input, for example, uh, in my application here. Uh, I know uh, for this switch I have got only one input okay depending on this input either of my cases will execute right now if I use the same thing for my for loop here right if I just copy this and uh, print it here the same thing here uh, j equals to so if I use my same switch index here so okay instead of switch index let me make this is uh, j here to make it more simple okay so here if I say J which is of okay which is a 5 right so it directly jumps to your case number 5 it breaks okay it doesn't even come to the default because uh, it is able to match something right the same J if it is your say J is 5 now if you are using the same J in a if and else condition okay what it does it checks if this else if this else if this else if this else if this okay yes this condition satisfied so you're going to print this okay so switch is more efficient uh, than your if and else conditions okay okay so let's let's see this if true okay so I'm going to say sys trace so and I'm going to give something as j equals to 4 so I'm not even bothered about the if condition uh, I think you guys pretty much well aware of what is the use of if condition so here I'm giving 4 no compilation issue right click run as Java application right so the question was can we add some other code in between case 1 and case 2? Yes, we can do that. Okay. Now, okay, if your question is something uh, to add this piece of code here, right? It's no. Alright, you cannot do that. Alright. So, if once your break is there, you can, now see, whatever statement you put after case 4 it is only for your case 4 itself all right now here what are things i'm putting it after case 4 what all code you put it is only for your case 4 it is not for your case 5 all right now what happens basically when i say after break i give the condition here if true right now what is happening is now when you do a break right uh this particular piece of code is code is not even reachable because when this piece of code gets executed 
this piece of code gets executed after that you're ba basically breaking out of the complete condition right now there is no point in having a piece of code here so compiler is smart enough to tell you that this particular piece is not reachable and if you can see this it is saying unreachable code okay uh, always improve yes okay yeah I, I hope it did answer your question right Ajit okay all right so we'll see other things also uh, down the line uh, how when we talk about unreachable code what is an unreachable code and uh, how you can get rid of those things now here in order to get rid of the uh, and get rid of your unreachable code i'm going to delete this okay very simple and straightforward all right <clears throat> So let me make this code beautiful and let me check in this file so that you guys can use this in your code. Okay, so I've got so this is your refills and this is a switch. Okay, so how do I check in? Right click uh, team uh, commit date and just click on this and commit and push okay so i committed this file and you guys are ready to check out this particular file um, okay once you check out you might get some kind of problems here um, what kind of problem it could be um, i am basically running on gdk 1.8 now if you go to your windows uh, preference here uh, and then where is that java compiler okay you will see something like 1.7 or 1.5 okay uh, make sure you you might get or if it is your 1.4 uh, it you might be having a problem when you use 1.4 uh, no you don't have to do that because Eclipse okay the question was do we have to download GIT plugin uh, for Eclipse you don't have to do that okay because Eclipse by itself gives you uh, the GIT plugin uh, internally okay you don't have to do that okay now usually what happens uh, I see whenever my students they check out the project and they complain that uh, uh, they, they are not able to compile anything or there is some problem with the workspace okay the problem is when I check in something I check in with a particular version and you check out something uh, your version if your version doesn't matches you will get those kind of issues okay so what do you do just go to your windows uh, preferences and just go to your compiler you can just type in a compiler here or you can just navigate through your java compiler so let me just type in here compiler and i just come to your java compiler and i come here and if you can see there are a lot of other versions i can uh, use it um, okay now as i'm using 1.8 i'm good here uh, i'm able to compile and do everything but if i use 1.4 uh, as i said your enhanced for loop is not uh, it it was it was it came into picture only after year one point five okay, so if I use this as one point four, I'll be getting some compilation issues yes for sure. So make sure you have this one point eight. Now as I said, uh, uh, this course is completely on your JDK one point eight. Now there is still an option of if you see your Eclipse, you will not be seeing your one point eight uh, compliance here okay. So what do you need to do for that? There are a couple of options. Let me. Uh, tell you the other option which even I haven't tried out but still it, it works basically so Windows go to your help uh, Eclipse market uh, okay now I know you guys might have installed the latest uh, Eclipse that is our Kepler right so just come here and say uh, JDK 1.8 let's see if this works okay so just come to this one okay and just do an install all right so this will add java 8 support for your eclipse kepler sr2 okay so this is one option for you uh, just search for your java 8 support for eclipse uh, kepler let me just copy and paste it real quick so that even though without the videos being coming to you you can just check out this or you can find this out okay so this is your 
Java 8 support for Eclipse okay so you can just use this and uh, you can install it so once you install it you can see the Java 8 version in your uh, Windows preferences and compiler okay so build path and one more challenge you might face here uh, properties Java build path uh, make sure that you have the proper GRE also uh, so how do you make sure everything is fine here uh, just go to your uh, library library tab okay how do you see that uh, windows preference or you just go to your right click on your project properties and go to your java build path and uh, click on your JRE system library uh, whatever you have it and just do an edit okay so you, you can just choose your uh, workspace default JRE depending on that what you have used it and even though there is other options you can choose from altern alternative JRE also okay so a couple of, op of uh, problems you might face in and uh, you guys have to find the solution so these are the basic things which I am sure you guys might find out but uh, I'm giving a solution for that but still if you have any problems we can still sort it out okay all right <clears throat> so any questions folks here uh, on this particular switch statement I hope no um, okay so let's let's see one more jump statement here uh, that is your break and continue okay uh, I can even copy the same example also uh, okay let me just type in otherwise so what do I do right click new class continue example public static void main okay okay so what this example does is it says uh, it loops through one to one and uh, it checks okay let's do this uh, for int i equals to 0 i less than 10 i plus plus okay uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say here, I'm going to use two things here. I will first let me use break here. So let me say here uh, system sys out and <clears throat> let me just say uh, value equals to i. Okay, and I'm going to say one more condition here if uh, i equals to equals to 5 okay uh, I can say here break okay now copy this and I'm going to paste this here again all right uh, so this is your value 1 this is your again value one but uh, let me say it as a value two okay now what's going to happen uh, every time your uh, when it comes here i equals to zero it comes here i equal to zero it is going to print here i equal to zero again it is going to print uh, here as i equals to zero so let me say here uh, before condition t i t i o n and this is your after condition Okay. All right. So here uh, I'm saying before condition print this and after condition print this. It's all the same thing which, I, which I'm printing here. Uh, right click, run as uh, Java application. So if you can see here, I'm just saying before condition uh, one. Before condition, this is one. That is a before condition. I'm put, uh, printing zero and after condition also I'm printing zero. Okay. So the same thing goes uh, goes on and on. So let me just give a new line sys trace now how do I print a new line uh, if you see the difference here I'll just say slash n okay backslash n backslash n is nothing but a new line character so right click run as Java application I can basically see uh, that 
there is a space between each and every line okay i mean each and every uh, after this particular statement okay uh, here if you see this print got printed and the first time the value of i was uh, zero so this condition did not match so even it got, uh, this one got printed okay so the same thing goes for this also this also got printed here okay so there is a new line character here that means it's a new line now uh, it goes till 1 2 3 4 3 4 okay when it comes to 5 if you can see here the fifth one came in picture that means the value of 5 equals to 5 now so it came here it, it printed this one the value of 5 it came to this condition if the uh, value of i equals to 5 it basically breaks okay the moment it breaks it is not even executing this piece of code okay if you can see here uh, I think somebody has got problems in viewing the lower portion of the screen. Okay, so if you see here, the five after condition is not been printed. Why? Because it find some in, uh, some values here, and it is not. I mean, it it uh, matches this condition, so it is breaking out of the condition. Okay. Now let me do it uh, for simplicity. Uh, come here and print this. Okay. So what am I doing here? I am checking for the condition if I, uh, I equals to 5 then break otherwise come here and just execute your values right click run as java application ok so the moment it finds i equal to 5 it breaks it doesn't even come to this piece of code alright now this is all about your break now what I want to do is uh, I want to basically say that if equal to if i equals to 5 instead of breaking it okay instead of breaking it I want to still continue with 10 till 10 okay but when it is 5 I want to continue it is something like I want to say 0 1 2 3 4 when it comes to 5 I will skip that particular condition I will I will not even come here I will again go back to the condition here my to my for loop and continue with the next iteration okay now see here I have used break here so when I used break it basically breaks out of the complete loop it doesn't even reaches your 6 also right so instead of break let me use a continue so let's see what's gonna happen here right click run as java application right if you see here 0 1 2 3 4 5 is lost because when it comes to your 5 okay it basically doesn't even come to this block it continues that means it again goes back to your for loop so uh, right click debug as so let me put a debug point here right click debug as java application okay so we are in the debug mode right now and let's see this so i equals 2 equals to 5 it is false comes to your uh, after two condition this is your i value is 2 so this is false 3 4 now the value of i is 5 now when it sees 5 if you see it will not even come here it again goes to the it says continue when you say continue it goes to the for loop here okay so it doesn't even come to this piece of code so now when it sees I, the value of i is 6 right now so it, uh, this condition is false so it goes on and on and on okay so now with this example if you can see I'm using something like i module 2 okay modular 2 alright so if i divided by uh, okay so if I say module of to equals to equals to zero okay so I want to say that uh, if 2 divided by 2 okay and the remainder is 0 okay that means then only you do a continue here so what do I do if I run this run as Java application it basically only prints the odd numbers here okay doesn't even print the even number because I know that if it is uh, 2 2 divided by 2 which is equals uh, I mean you you get the remainder as 0 here so you don't get get anything so if it is your 3 divided by 2 you uh, you still have a remainder of 
uh, two here sorry one here so for that reason this condition is not getting satisfied so it is going to it is not going to come here and it is going to print this okay so modulo is one more operation wherein you can uh, basically uh, check what is what is the uh, what is that the dividend yeah okay any questions on your break and continue uh, this also will be of some use sometimes you want to check for a condition okay if this condition is true you want to basically exit through the exit through the complete for loop okay now uh, there is one more uh, for loop which we will see here uh, in the next class oh, you can basically have a name to a for loop uh, let's say my for loop okay and we'll see how to use this particular uh, construct here okay in the next session any questions folks uh, if the can you check out today's can you check out today's file uh, can you I mean it's me or you yes you can check out today's file okay uh, okay let me just check in this file uh, team okay I'll just add this break so toggle between your break and continue here you'll find the difference what is the difference between these two yes yes I'll, I'm going to check in all the files so team commit okay so update commit and push all right so all the files are in place uh, make sure guys uh, if you if you right click on the file and re say replace with uh, head revision if it does not work go to your GIT repository and from here just right click on this and just say pull ok alright folks if there are no questions can you make uh, recording available I missed that uh, yes Keith uh, uh, the admin team they are actually working out on that uh, it takes actually a couple of days uh, due to some difficulties so probably they have changed their strategy and uh, you will find your recordings very soon okay uh, thanks guys I'm just gonna close this uh, if you have no questions uh, you are very f you are free to check out from the session uh, yes, Lawrence oh uh, yeah yeah Lawrence uh, uh, when was the uh, while and do while uh, class taken was it on Friday it was on Friday yes Disconnected and I hear something the class would be only on Monday. Uh, but before even disconnecting, I believe that was been covered. At the moment I was actually working on this uh, GID repository, that point of time uh, something went wrong. But I think we covered the do while loop as well. Okay, uh, no problem. I'll uh, check out the recording. Yeah, please. Yeah, if you have any questions, then you can get back to me as well. Thanks, Jerome. All right. Uh, yeah, thanks guys. Uh, have a nice nice evening and a good night as well. Bye bye Short cooking, okay uh, Okay, the short um, Yeah, pretty this uh, the shortcut is control plus friend slash, okay? Emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis: How we are different from our competitors. 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kemphasis.com.